coming in every morning. Let us stand as we join together and sing our call to worship this morning on page 2164 of the Faith We Sing, Sanctuary. <laughs> Father, thank you for meeting us right where we are this morning in this place. We say with all the humility and respect and honor that is due you that you are welcome here. And as a church family, we say you are worthy of our praise. Grant us the faith to allow you to work in us and through us all for your glory and for our good. And we pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, page 370, uh, it reminds me of Romans 8:37. In one translation, it says, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In another translation, it reads, In all these things, we have complete victory through him who loved us. We have victory in Jesus. And Mr. Charlie, this song is for you. <laughs> Oh, 
Our psalm today is Psalm 23, page 754 of your hymn. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside still waters, restores my life. Leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for as long as I live. We invite our ushers to come forward that we may worship God with God's tithes and our offerings. Holy Lord, as we read in the scriptures, we hear about times of plenty and we hear about times of lean. These days, sometimes it feels very lean. It feels lean in the spirit and lean in the wallet. But Lord, as we give back, we are reminded of the many blessings that you give to us in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, if we can't give from our pockets, let us give from our hearts. And whatever we give, may you bless it, that it may further your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. In Christ's holy name, amen. amen.
Now I invite you to join me in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please do be seated. As we pray, don't forget to find out what we give thanks to God for. As we talk about our offering and I look into the plate, I'm grateful that I think we've got enough money to cover the, uh, the candle lighter that Daniel destroyed as he was walking through. There he is. Hey, Daniel, you know you're one of us when I start picking on you from the pulpit. No, the candle lighter is fine and we appreciate him. And I'm glad he's got a good spirit I can pick on him. What are we giving thanks to God for? What are we celebrating? Cooler mornings. Cooler weather. Boy, it's been beautiful Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I hear it's supposed to be humid again next week. So, What else? People willing to serve even if they run over candlelighters. People willing to serve even if they run over candlelighters and the preacher picks on them. Good spirits. Amen. Yes, sir. got to take my grandson to his first Southern Miss football game. First football games. Anybody else? All the little things. Don't forget to pause and be thankful. I'm grateful that we've got a, 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 a student board, a school board that meets and that fights for the protection of our kids. Um, it's a tough thing being in leadership, and we lift up our own Kim as, as she is a part of that leadership, and we lift up Dr. Townsend, and we pray for them. No decisions these days are easy. None of them are popular, but I know that they carry the love and the safety of the kids and the teachers and all involved, and so we pray for them. We lift you up, and we thank you for serving on, in that capacity. Um, as we remember the 20th anniversary of what happened Tuesday, September the 11th. Uh, we, of course, our minds go out to think of all the many uh, first responders, the fire department, the police, the emergency personnel, the ambulance folks, the folks that go running into the buildings that we would normally go running out of because they have your safety and your care in their hearts. We pray for them and pray for their strength. We pray for our military, even as they uh, back up and reassess, because there's always something going on around this world. You know, it, we think about uh, being in harm's way or going to war, as we started war with Afghanistan some 20 years ago. And now we sit and we kind of look back and wonder, what did we accomplish? The United Methodist Church is not a pro-war uh, denomination. It's not an anti-war denomination. It's a just war denomination. And that usually ends up meaning we end up fighting about what's just. I don't know if you remember, but 20 years ago, the Mennonites were saying, no, no, we don't need to go to war. And the Southern Baptists were saying, go, go, go. And the Methodists were saying, we're still arguing about it. <laughs> I am grateful that there are people that bring their hearts and their prayer lives to the service of our country. Let's keep them in our minds as we pray. Yes, ma'am. The, okay, the mobile wall is coming to Richland this week. I remember in the 80s when it came to the, to, uh, the VA and my father went there. And that was one of the first times I remember watching him cry. But I knew him, and I knew him, and I knew him. Miss Tina, what are the hours on the last 24 hours that we've done all night long? Where in Richland? Behind the police station? Behind the police station in Richland. So that's post office area. And Behind the library. I'm sorry, you're right, library. Well, that's something. Okay, thank you for letting us know. Uh, we lift up um, 
How was it I get up here and draw a blank? What's your name? Come on, Nathan, help me out. Charlie, Charlie thank you. Charlie Hillman. Charlie. You guys know I know his name, but just in the stress of being in front of everybody, the brain shuts down. I, I apologize. We lift up Charlie, who's going for a heart procedure this Wednesday morning, and we pray for him and, and that process and those that go with him. And so, Charlie, you're going to be in our thoughts and in our minds. We'll check on you then. Who else are we praying for? Nancy Williams. Nancy Williams is still struggling trying to get things together. Um, the, the folks that are coming out to do the therapies and stuff don't seem to be organized, and so it's just kind of rough on her. Miss Inez Laird, who hasn't been with us for quite a while now. Well, many of our seniors have not been with us for quite a while now. We remember them, but Inez particularly, she's been kind of down in her back and she's trying to get therapy and been hurting but she sends her love she misses every one of you i promise you all right yes ma'am the family of celia king tell the family of celia king tell us what's going on with celia king's family um, she had the virus and she passed away okay that's linda reynolds sister sister and so she passed all right Folks in Clear Branch. Very, very you know, one of the problems with prayer times, it can turn into gossip time. <laughs> There's a fine line between the two. But the point is, is we come together as a people of God. We come together uniting our hearts. We come together claiming God's presence among us and uniting in a power that is greater than what we are, a power, that's, a power that sustains. doesn't always change things in the ways that we want it to be, but changes us. So as we unite our hearts, the Lord be with you. Lord God, thank you so much for the opportunity to pause in the midst of our lives, to have a, a Sabbath moment where we stop and we assess just who we are and who you are in us. Lord, and in these moments, we thank you for hearts that sing out in praise and thanksgiving. Open our eyes and our hearts that we may see and that we may know the many blessings that are around us. It's easy to get caught up in the darkness. It's easy to get caught up in the, the hate and the pain and the struggle and the things that we are up against. But Lord, we can do all things through you who strengthen us. Lord, we lift up those that weigh heavily on our hearts and our minds. We pray that your healing touch be with them in body and mind and in soul. Lord, for Charlie, who goes for his procedure this Wednesday, we pray that you just watch over him and work through the doctors, the nurses, the hospitals, and all the staff, but we know you are a creator and you are a healer. Strengthen us day by day, Lord, that as we grow in your peace and as we grow in your love, we may be a healing balm for the nations. For Lord, we give you thanks and unite our voices, praying in the way that you taught us when you said, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. John chapter 10, if you want to read with me, the Gospel of John. I just love the imagery in the Gospel of John. It's my favorite. I know, you know, we might each have different favorite ones, and certainly Mark and, and Matthew have their kind of flavor, but I love John. In the beginning was the Word. And John likes to use a lot of images, of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, agricultural farming images, and, and this is one. And so we hear that Jesus is the good shepherd. Chapter 10, starting in verse 1. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I tell you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And we, when he has brought out all of his sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. And this figure Jesus used with them because they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus says to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I came 
that they may have life and have it abundantly. Beloved, it's the word of God for the people of God. Let the people say, Thanks be to God. Gracious God, may the power of your holy word speak to our hearts and our minds today just as it spoke to the disciples so long ago. Strengthen us. In Christ's name, amen. Well, I wanted to talk today about hearing God's voice. Now, that's always kind of a dangerous subject because I work with a woman who works in the mental health field. And when I start talking about hearing God's voice, she says, now, do you hear those words on the inside of your head or on the outside of your head? God does speak to us. I hope we know that. You know, they often refer to the Old Testament as the time when God spoke to God's people. God continues to speak to us today. But I think one of the problems is there's so much else that's speaking to us. There's so much else that's screaming at us and vying for our attention. Sometimes it's hard to listen. John gives us this image, this pastoral image of the sheep calling, or the shepherd calling the sheep. And the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Now, you kind of have to imagine what this is like because the way that sheep herding happened back in the first century and for a long time, uh, it was very different from the way that we herd cows and such today. Now, I, I, believe it or not, I do have a little bit of agricultural experience. I, I don't have near as much as the Gordons or the Rosses, I bet, but I've worked with cows and I've worked with sheep too. And I'm here to tell you, sheep are stupid. <laughs> I don't like the image of that we're sheep. But you know, sometimes we don't do some things that are very smart. So what used to happen back in the, in the first century and the imagery that Jesus is talking about is not that they had barbed wire fences because barbed wire hasn't been around since what, the 1850s. But instead they might find kind of a canyon. They might stack up rock walls and make a kind of barrier. And when the, the shepherd would come in from far off, because usually they didn't have any boundaries. They just sort of wandered with the sheep. But the shepherd might have to come into town. And so the shepherd would bring all the sheep and put them into this holding pen on the outside of town. And guess what? They would mix with other sheep. And yes, they did have ways that they marked their sheep. They did use branding and they did use some other kind of cuts and things that said, this is my sheep as compared to your sheep. But when you took all of them and you put them all in one big place, it might be a little too easy to walk away with somebody else's animals. Can you imagine if we go up to the sales, you know, up here in, in Jackson? And what if there was just one big fist in place and everybody brought their cows? Can you imagine what kind of chaos that would be to get your animals back together? And to claim your animals, get them back on the truck and get them out. But one of the things that was neat was that the shepherd would come up to the opening, the gate. And it would call for their sheep. And the sheep knew the shepherd's voice. And they would come. And so the shepherd would lead the sheep. Lead them out into the world. The world that was tough. The world that was full of things that would hurt them. And lead them to greener pastures and stiller waters. And walking with them in their struggles and in their celebrations. What beautiful imagery is that? As we take that today, we try and lay it on our lives. It's like, okay, maybe we are sheep. And maybe we don't always make the best decisions do we feel Christ walking with us? Do we feel Christ talking to us and leading us? Because sometimes it's just like, oh Lord, where are you in the midst of this? Well, let's, let's think about what is talking to us today. What, what voices are speaking to us? You know, if it was back to my, my grandparents' generation, uh, there were advertisements, so maybe they went to a ball game or something, and, and most of those advertisements were written, and they like to have celebrities, and so, you know, if your favorite baseball player was drinking Coke, you wanted to drink Coke too. But then maybe my parents' generation, and for some of you, you watch the movies. So maybe you watch some of your favorite actors, and they smoked a lot. They smoked a lot in the 40s and 50s, and so you wanted to smoke with them. You wanted to look as cool as James Dean or Catherine Hepburn. You wanted to dress like them and act like them and talk like them. All these are voices that influence us. 
And maybe my generation, yeah, certainly it's sports stars, and, and, and we wanted to wear their shoes, and Michael Jordan's, and, and such as that. But then there were all these magazines. And the magazines, we could look at them, and so, you know, I like the hunting and fishing magazine, and of course you had to have the, the best new rifle, or the, the best new scope. And, and so they showed somebody that had this big old beautiful animal with the new rifle, and so, hey, if I buy that rifle, I can hunt like that too. No. <laughs> Take skill or something. I don't know. And then unfortunately for women, a lot of the, the magazines were showing women that weren't real. As digital technology comes on, they'd lengthen their legs and they'd give them bigger breasts and they'd change the color of their skin. And so there are these images out there that are screaming, you need to act like this. You need to be like this. You need to trust in this. And it isn't even real is the sad thing of it. And so many people, so many young people feel the pressure of that. And even today, all you got to do is watch commercials. If you brush your teeth with this toothpaste or chew this gum, you're going to have girls all over you. <laughs> or if you drive with these tires on your car, your family's going to be safe. We want all these things. And they speak to us. Sometimes they lead us astray. But the dangers of the modern age are that it's not just so much about celebrities that we might see on gum cards from the 50s. And it might not even be about some of the old movies. And it might not even be about the magazines. But now we have the internet and we have all these things they call influencers. All right, old folks, let me cue you up. Anybody, anybody can start a web page. Tyler Hocutt can start a web page. And Tyler Hocutt can do a web page based on style. And he can show you how to put on the, the newest creams or wear the newest jeans or whatever. And if enough people like his web page and they click on it, they say they like it, and he gets enough subscribers, guess what? Some of the people that sell the creams and the jeans, they'll start to pay Tyler to do this. So Tyler wants to do more of it. And then it's all about how many people like you. But y'all like to be liked. I, I like to be liked. But how cool is it to actually have 500,000 people click a button that literally says, I like you. <laughs> and there are these influencers that are out there that say you need to act this way. You need to be this way. You need to do this. And guess what? Some of these influencers are political too. And a lot of people are listening. A lot of people are hearing these voices. A lot of people are having all this scream at them. But we need to hear the voice of Christ. The voice that leads us to calmer waters. To greener pastures. Not the voice that calls us out to death and destruction. There are false voices that are out there. But we need to know that the voice that we want to hear is that of the Good Shepherd. So how then, preacher? How then in the midst of all the voices that are screaming at us, whether they be on TV or whether they be in magazines or whether they be in influencers or news broadcasts, how do we hear the voice of Christ out of all of that? Well, I've got a little experiment I want to do with you to try and make my point. And Olivia Mitchell has agreed to, yeah, yeah, here she comes. She's agreed to help me with this. And I'm going to invite her to come down front and say, Olivia, if you'll just stand right over here and face back this way, face back toward the choir. And so, Olivia, I'm going to ask your mother to call you. And she's going to say, Olivia, come here. Now, only, I'm not going to point to your mother. I'm going to point to somebody else. And I want you to tell me which one is your mother's voice, okay? So look that way. I want you to see where I'm caught, where I'm pointing to. So Olivia, is this your mother? Olivia, I'm here. Is that your mother? No, 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 no. Well, how about this one? Olivia, come here. Is that your mother? How about this one? Olivia, come here. Is that one your mother? No. Well, how about this one? Olivia, come here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, come around and face everybody. Let's talk about this just a moment. You did that really, really well. How do you think that you knew your mother's voice out of all these women that I asked to act like your mother and call you? 
You don't know. You sure you don't know? You sure you don't know? You know, she doesn't know, but do we know how we understand God's voice in our hearts? Olivia, let me tell you something. Have you heard that voice before? Do you live with that voice every day? But sometimes it even get on your nerves. <laughs> but mostly, but mostly that voice is calling you to dinner at the table. That voice is calling you to get your homework done. That voice is calling you to take a bath and to get dressed and keep you safe. Right? You better watch that all these other voices. I don't know about you. <laughs> but you know that voice because you live with that voice and you know that voice loves you. So let's give Olivia a hand. I appreciate it. Thank you, Olivia. How do we know Christ's voice? Well, you got to live with it. You got to live with it in your heart, in your life. You've got to read your Bible daily. Daily. I hope you have a devotional life. I hope you have a prayer life. I hope you have a time where you, a Sabbath moment every day. Well, you'll stop and try and listen to God speaking to your heart. To also be a part of Bible studies. Attending worship is good. It's not always the, the, the only thing, but hearing preachers talk about how we connect to Christ. And hopefully good preachers will make that connection between the craziness of this world and the peace of the heavenly world to come. Because that is there. I learned that people know God's voice from my grandmother. I learned that it's really important to have a relationship if you're going to hear the voice from my grandmother. Because my grandmother was probably about, I don't know, five foot two. She might have weighed 90 pounds soaking wet. And every morning before dawn as the sun was coming up, she grabbed two five-gallon buckets. One had a bunch of corn in it and the other one had sweet feed. And she would walk down to the edge of the fields and she would put her hands to her mouth and go, I don't do that anymore, do they, Mr. Gordon? <laughs> and way off in the distance, even in the edge of the woods, you'd hear, and here they come, hungry. And she would get out there and she knew the ones that had scars and she knew the ones that were about to have a calf and she knew the ones that needed a little added extra attention and she'd check on them and she'd call them in with food and she'd, she'd pet on them. She basically had a bunch of thousand pound pets. She loved them and they loved her. So the last words she said to me, last year of her life, she said, please don't take my cows away from me. They were her life. We are Jesus' life. Jesus loved us so much, he went to the cross for us. He's not going to lead us astray. He's not going to lead us into times of fighting and dissension and, and, and chaos and misery. He's going to lead us into peace. It doesn't mean that times are always going to be peaceful, but he's going to lead us in the right direction. And we've got to know that voice in our hearts and in our souls. We've got to be that voice in our lives and in our communities. And we've got to share that voice that others may know that voice in their hearts as well. This is how we come to know salvation. And this is how we come to know the voice of Christ who speaks to us. May God bless the hearing of his holy word. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord God, I thank you that you have not given up on us and that you continue to talk to us. Continue to lead us to calmer waters and to greener pastures. Help us, God, in the midst of all that screams out of us that we may hear your voice and your voice alone. In Christ's holy name, amen. Our closing hymn is on page 398. Jesus calls us. 398 in your hymnal, I'll invite you to stand as we sing.
Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. All God's children say. Amen. Amen.